In this video, we will start with trigonometrical functions and we will focus on trigonometric ratios of special angles. You will find this on page 168 in the Namibia A is level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. A trigonometrical function describes the relationship between an angle of a right angle triangle and the ratio of the lengths of the two sides of that triangle. We are just now busy with ordinary level. So mathematicians have assigned definitions to the different trigonometric ratios as well as an abbreviation for each definition so that we do not have to write it out in full every time. Some of them will be familiar to you from ordinary level, but there will also be a few new ones introduced in this section. So this is the old one. This is the sine, this is the abbreviation, opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan opposite over adjacent. And I always refer it to it as so, a, so, a. So opposite over hypotenuse, cos, is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. In trigonometry, we often use the Greek symbol theta to indicate angles. This symbol is pronounced as theta. Other symbols we will use later in this uh, symbol is I uh, or phi, pronounced phi, and B pronounced beta. B pronounced beta. Certain angles occur frequently in mathematics. For example, the 30 degree, the 45, and the 60. And this is very important. And I think we... So 30 is pi over 6. 45 is pi over 4. And 60 is pi over 3. So it's, it's almost like the opposite. When it, was, when it was 3, it was a 6. And when it was a 6, it was a 3. Okay, so just get away to remember it. And in 45, then it was... Uh, pi over 4. And you will find it helpful to know the value of their trigonometric functions. Now, this is especially, uh, especially if you go in further studies, you will not use a calculator in your, in say, calculus, because you will work with this familiar or this special angles. Okay, but let's start. This is the trigonometrical ratios of the special angles. For many values of theta, a calculator can only give an approximation of the value of sin theta, cos theta, or tan theta. In the special angles 30, 45, and 60, there it is, the exact value of the trigonometric function can be found. We determine them by making use of isosceles triangle and the equilateral triangle, and we work in radians. Okay, so let's first go to the 45. Now the 45 will be... This is your triangle. Let's just get it back. So this is your triangle. This one. So this is your triangle. And this is 90. And this is 45, 45. So this one will also be 45. So it's, a, it's an isosceles uh, triangle also, but just with 90. So it's 1, 1. And then with Pythagoras theorem, I can get that that is square root 2. And that is when I find my functions for, for sin, cos, and tan. I just, sin is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, cos is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan is opposite over adjacent, just one. Um, in chapter one, I, was, I showed you how to rationalize the denominator. So in this case, this is just the example, and we did that, and that's actually the reason why I was also doing it additionally. So if we rationalize it, we do this, and then it's square root 2, and a square root 2, uh, a square root two times square root 2 is just becoming, and that's where I got that one. Okay, rationalizing. So some values, uh, roots, are were rational like, like we did on page 8. And that's what I did there. Okay, and now, this one is very, and I, if I forget it, and, and I, I just start drawing, and then I can write everyone down. So, I need to make this a little bit bigger. 
So I always will start, and this is why in the beginning, and I think I did it too long, I was just showing you where it, it's coming from an equilateral, this was coming from an isosceles triangle, this is coming from an equilateral triangle. So all the sides was two, but then I just take a half. So, so the best way, if you start drawing it yourself, is, is just, and you were saying maybe forget it, or you didn't learn, or you cannot recall it, then it's basically just saying, okay, let's just start with my isosceles triangle, and I, I'm, I'm going to redraw it for you. And maybe it's not such a good drawing, but it doesn't matter. But I only work with half. And that, then, this is 90. Okay, don't forget. But all the sides was, because it was 2, 2, that was also 2. Now, this one don't look isosceles now. Seems to me my sketch was not so good. Uh, oh, sorry, that's, that's too much. I think it would have been better if I was just drawing it up to there. It's just... I like it if it looks a little bit better. This with my eye. Yes, it's looking better to me. Okay, so if it's uh, equal, um, equilateral, and this is two, then this will be one, and this will be one. So it's easy then to, to recall that. And then with Pythagoras theorem, uh, to work out that side, it's two squared minus one squared, and that will be the square root ooh, of three. And to get my pen correct again. Okay. So, if, if this was an equilateral triangle, all the angles would have been 60. 60. But that one is cut and that one is 30. Okay. And now, don't forget, that's in degrees. But if I, and I as I said, the 6 goes with the 3. So, this is pi over 3. And the 3 goes with the 6. So, this is pi over 6. Okay. I forgot to write this is pi over 4. So I just showed you both. And then you can work out all the functions. You can start by, uh, I'm working from the 30. So if I say sin, it's opposite over hypotenuse. And there's my half. And then cos, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. And there's my value. And then tan is opposite over adjacent. And I rationalized again my denominator. And the same with sin. Sin is, now I work from, from this angle, okay, don't forget. So sin is opposite over um, hypotenuse, and then cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is uh, opposite over, um, op opposite, ah, so couture, opposite over adjacent, and that. And that's, that's how I, so, I, 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 maybe I can just show you, if you come to the 90, so if you come to the exam, and maybe you forgot it, just quickly go and draw your sketch and think how you derive it. Learn how you derive it, then it's easy. Because then I know this is 1, this is 1, it's an isosceles, this is 90. And with Pythagoras' theorem, by saying 1 squared minus 1, ah, uh, uh, yes, plus. Because this is the long one, this is the short, there I was finding a short. So, and then it will be square root 2. So this is square root 2, and this is pi over 4. This is actually also pi over 4, so it doesn't matter if I work from this angle or this angle, I will get the same values. Very, very easy to, to derive this, and if you want, you can even memorize it. Okay, <clears throat> and maybe we can just quickly see what I was writing here to help you. Uh, where am I now? Okay. These ratios are often used, especially when stated that problems should be solved without using a calculator. Sometimes it's easier to memorize the sketches, except what I told you, and then determine the ratio values from the sketches. But otherwise you can memorize it, but for me a picture speaks a little bit more, and it's easier for me to just work from the pictures. And that's why I showed you the pictures every time. So... Without using a calculator, find the exact value of the following. Now, I just don't forget that I gave you the 30 or the 60. So, basically, I just substitute the values, okay? And then I just um, multiply with the reciprocal, and then I can rationalize the denominator. Now, because it's not in the, this Namibian cam, um, AS level um, syllabus, 
I think they will not penalise you if you leave it. But usually it's more simplified um, if you go in further mathematics, if you rationalise the denominator. Okay. And there I, there I worked with the rationalised value, do you see? And then it's actually easier, then it's also coming to that answer. And then this one, this one is four, then I work with the other sketch, there I showed it to you. And then, and then it comes in the six again. And I, it's just basic, basic simplifying then. Okay, so one is four over three, I multiply, and then I get this, and then I rationalise, and I get this. Okay. I want you... To stop the video, and there I just showed you working with the rationalized value. So it's always actually easier working with that one. Okay, I think if you just do, okay, I think in this case, I'm just going to give you one. Because it's, it's really not so difficult. So I'm just going to give you B. Because there's a 60, there's a 30, there's a 45. Everything is in number B. Okay. I'm going to make, try to make it smaller and still see. Yes, there it is. Okay. And I prefer always to write it first down. So I'm going to just do number B. So it's cos... 60 degrees, sin 30 degrees over cos 45 degrees multiply and 45 degrees. Okay, let's start. If I substitute cos 60, okay, so cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that will just be a half. Sin 30 will be the same as cos 60, so it's opposite over hypotenuse, so it's also a half. Cos 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse, and now I must make the... Uh, but I think we will work with the value that's not rationalized. Okay? And then uh, the next one so where am I? Tan 45. Always remember tan 45 is just 1 because it's opposite over uh, adjacent. Okay. And if I simplify this, I'm getting a quarter. 1 over square root 2. And that's a quarter multiply the reciprocal, square root 2 over 1. And my final answer will be Square root 2 over 4. Okay, and that's how you do it. And that's also in further mathematics after school. That is how they work without using a calculator.